Hello, Anatomy and Physiology. I am here with you to go over your concept map review before you take your test today. Um, and one of my three dogs is with me here in the back. That very good boy is named Norman. And don't tell the others, but he's the best one. Um, so anyways, here we go over our concept map review. I thought I would record this video from home in case things were really remote. This is probably where I make my videos most of the time, usually with some kind of distraction in the background. So as you are going over this video with me, you should have your notebook um, notes out and be filling this in um, just like we would in class. So we're going to start first with the classification of our body membranes, beginning first with the only one connective tissue membrane. This is the one found in your joints, which is called the synovial membrane. Um, then we have our epithelial membranes. Uh, number two is referring to the one that is your dry skin, which you should know as your cutaneous membrane. And then we have the one that lines the body cavities that open to the exterior, meaning your holes. What membrane is that? You say mucus, of course. And then the fourth one is the one that lines the body cavities that are closed to the outside. And so these would be your serous membranes. Now, this flows down um, into the two divisions of our serous membranes. We have the two layers. So one layer um, is touching the outside of an organ, and then the second one lines the body cavity wall. So that one that touches the actual outside of the organ is called visceral, and then the one that lines the body cavity is parietal. So those are our membranes. Um, moving over to our integumentary system and the derivatives of the skin. These are like our skin appendages or the accessories that we find embedded in the walls of the skin. Um, should ask first here, but our Eckrin or Apocrin, these are our sweat glands or pseudoriferous glands. Then we have those that produce sebum, which is oil. Those are your sebaceous gland. Um, I made this note, so I remembered to talk about it with you guys. So make sure you know what you find in sweat. So salt, sodium chloride, NaCl, um, water, obviously, salt and water. But there's going to be, if it's apocrine, uh, perhaps proteins and lipids. We also might have vitamin C. It's not vitamin D, but vitamin C um, could be in sweat. Um, and your notes have all the rest of those listed, but those are the important ones to remember. Salt, sodium chloride, protein lipids, and vitamin C. Um, it's secreting some of these waste and other products because it's one function of the skin is excretion. All right, then that gland that produces sebum, which is oil, is called the sebaceous gland. Um, and then the other skin derivative that you need to know for the test is what um, the erector pili muscle raises, meaning what's the thing that makes, what stands up when your erector pili muscle pulls on it. That's gonna be your hair follicles. And then lastly, um, the thing on the ends of our fingers that increase our skin dexterity, meaning like we can use it as a little tool to scratch things, to pick things up a little bit more easily. Those are your nails. Oh, excuse me. Then there's three types of hair that I want to review with you. Um, so we have that hair okay, that is found on infants. We go. We then have vellus hair. That's the peach fuzz hair that's on um, women as well as young children. And then lastly, terminal hair is your coarser hair that we think of like on the heads of your, the top of your head, your eyebrows in your in your armpits just need to show you what's happening in the background here and then um anyways know the differences between the three types
<laughs> Anyways, uh, then lastly, I, our nails, as I mentioned there. All right, everybody should bring, bring your dog to school day. <clears throat> um, one last thing to note here is that both your hair and your nails come from your epidermis. And so um, not the dermis, but the epidermis. All right, then moving on to the bottom half of the page here. I when we talk about the skin and the layers of the skin, it's broken up into the dermis and the epidermis. The dermis has two regions within it. One is um, the part that makes up the dermal papilla, and that's the papillary region. That's the top layer, it's much thinner, and it has those raised ridges that are responsible for fingerprints. And then we have the larger area that's full of blood vessels, dense fibrous, irregular connective tissue, um, and that's reticular. What you also find in reticular layers is a lot of elastic and collagen fibers, and they are both really responsible for giving your skin its strength and um, really just the strength that your skin has. Then we have the epidermis, and it um, on this diagram, we're going to go from the deepest to most superficial. On the test, be careful and notice um, what it's asking you for. If it's asking you from the top to bottom, bottom to top, and if we're asking about thin skin or if we're asking about thick skin. He's bored with this lecture. So our deepest layer that does mitosis um, is called stratum basal. We did not use the term um, germativium. Um, some older textbooks might use that, but um, that's not something you have to worry about for this test. Moving up, then we have stratum spinosum. That is where you're gonna find a lot of the dendritic cells that um, work and function to be part of your immune response. Then we have stratum granulosum. Um, stratum granulosum, um, well, there's not too much to know, but it's kind of got a lot of keratinized sites in there in the lipid layer. Stratum lucidum, only in thick, careless skin. We would skip that layer if we're talking about thin skin. And then stratum corneum has the top layer of dead cells that lay down um, to produce sort of your extra outer hard um, keratin coverings. All right, keratin is those dead cells that you have on the outside. The most abundant cells in all of the epidermis though is definitely gonna be keratinocytes, giving your skin its um, tough characteristics. Um, I believe that's it for these notes in this video. So as, um, as soon as you're done watching this, you're going to go ahead and access your test through the email I should have sent you by the time you finish this, if you're following the steps in order. Uh, anyways, good luck and message me if you have any questions.